so far uh kind of a few meals kind of a, a little bit of training didn't really get any training footage and um, so that's what you got that little there or that there little flex um but what i wanted to talk to you guys about today was essentially how i'm structuring my nutrition with two training sessions per day okay because this is one of those cases and we kind of touched on it in the last uh vlog where this is one of the instances where meal timing or nutrient timing does become slightly more important. Okay. Um, it's still not something that's going to be the make or break of your plan. And what I mean by that is it's not something that is going to actually be the reason you get results or achieve your, your, your best in the long term. Okay. Um, well, it probably is what's going to help you. It will help you achieve your best long term. But what I mean is, it's not going to accelerate your fat fat loss. It's not going to accelerate your overall performance unless you're being absolutely ridiculous with your nutrition on the whole. So, what what the whole thing with meal timing? Most people kind of think of meal timing in the perspective of, oh, I'm a recreational bodybuilder in terms of I'm, I'm trying to train i'm trying to improve my body composition you know i want to lose a little bit of fat i want to gain a little bit of muscle because that's what most people are doing right and in my case i'm actually training for a sport right so i'm doing brazilian jiu-jitsu right and obviously i'm over here in idaho it's not my normal club but still uh, sbg idaho have been more than welcoming uh, to me so they're home away from home but anyway Normally when I'm at home, I would be training in the evening um, and the the overall meal timing, nutritional timing isn't hugely relevant then, right? Because the main concern when you're training twice per day is being well fueled for the second session, right? The only time you're ever going to be in a position where you're, we'll say, ill fueled uh, or poorly fueled if you're training once per day is perhaps if you're training fasted but even then it's not a huge issue because you'll probably have eaten the day before all right so if you're training once per day this it's just so irrelevant as long as you are eating enough calories overall eating enough carbohydrates maybe fats depending on your sport um, or depending on the activities you're engaging in uh, but if you, as long as you're eating enough calories it's just not a concern. You're going to be fueled for your training session. Yes, there are better timing strategies for even single day training sessions, right? So what I mean by that is if you know you're going to be training first thing in the morning, then, you know, maybe having a, a bigger meal, a more carbohydrate dense meal before you go to bed so that you know that those glycogen stores are fully topped off, right? Or, you know, maybe having a little bit more carbs in the morning before and maybe after your training session is what helps you right but overall over a 24 hour period 
as long as you're getting enough calories in, as long as your nutrition is in some way adequate, you know, if you follow all the advice we give online, all that kind of stuff, you know, you're just not going to really run into an issue, right? But if you're training twice per day, especially if you're doing your, we'll call it your main activity, like your sport second, there is a very real possibility that you won't be adequately fueled for your next training session. If those training sessions are within six to eight hours of each other, right? Or you're not putting any focus on your nutrition in the in-between time. But generally, if you're doing six to eight hours in between sessions or more, you know, that you're, you're going to focus on actually eating. Or you're not going to even focus on it. You're going to have to eat at some stage. You know, you're going to be hungry. Um, but with my case, I am training uh, in the morning at roughly 6 a.m. Like I get up at 5 make my food that's what you saw first turn on that kettle and stuff um eat my food go to the gym yeah it would be more ideal if there was a, a little bit of a longer time period let that food digest but given that you know it's oats honey and there's some way it didn't show that um like it's not something that's really really slow digesting and it's not going to help me and also you have to consider that my overall nutrition i'm eating somewhere around maintenance and what i mean by somewhere is that like you know i'm trying to enjoy myself over here not being ridiculous with food but some days you know maybe i'm eating more calories some days i'm eating less and that's because essentially my last meal of the day is we'll call it a structured free meal like i still try to stay roughly within my calories but i'm not really caring too much about having that meal perfect like if i want some pizza you know and we're going out for pizza like i'll have some pizza like I'm not stressing that meal too much as long as it's staying roughly in and around the calories that I want to get. Also considering that some days, you know, my activity is just going to be higher. Like yesterday I got, I don't know, 15, 16 K steps and we went to a water park. So you're kind of swimming around. So that's obviously all contributing to the, the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And I still did my two training sessions. So activity was slightly higher that day and I was still only eating the calories that I have down as maintenance. So that day I was probably in a bit of a deficit. So coming into today's training sessions, you know, I'm already in a little bit of a deficit. But overall, it still doesn't impact your ability to train too much unless you are in the very, very depths of a diet. Like you've very little body fat, you've very, you know, we'll call it wishy-washy glycogen levels, um, where some day, sometimes you're you're quite topped off, you feel great, and then other times, you know, the, the, the energy is just not that there. And while you might have some body fat that you can still tap into, some fat stores that you can still tap into, you know, that has a little bit of a lag time. It takes a little bit extra to kind of get into that. So you might find that you don't have that extra little ex extra gear, you know. Um, but yeah, back to, to my sessions. So in the morning, wake up, breakfast, train, come home, flex. Uh, no, then I, I eat again. I usually cook my, my food. The, the main kind of meals that I have because again what I'm doing is I'm having a somewhat structured meal for, for that and what I mean by that is like I know roughly the kind of macros that I'm going to hit for those so I basically just have like mince or again ground beef as they call it over here and I roughly have like we'll say 1.3 pounds I know I think that's like 570 570 grams uh, of that like when I'm at home I usually just have about 800 grams of that but again like we're that last meal of the day is a little bit more free so that would be straight after the gym that's at roughly we'll say eight o'clock you know so it's already been roughly three hours since i last ate and i've trained during that time um then after that before i go to jujitsu which is a class that's on at 12 so there's roughly five hours between my training sessions um i'm gonna have another bowl of oats and whey just because it's something that sits well with me i feel like i'm i'm on point when I eat it, you know, it's something that I feel even contributes to my ability to train. And what I mean by that is like, I kind of get into a mindset. Like the only time I ever eat that is when I'm going to go train, you know, that's kind of like my go train meal. So I already start getting into the mindset that, okay, it's training time. So my body kind of starts, as soon as I start eating that, I'm like, okay, my body starts going into this focus mode where it's time to train, you know? So do that, then essentially I eat the second half of that meal that I already cooked earlier on because I essentially just split it in two, cook it, or well, I cook it, then split it in two, 
and then I have it for the rest of the day. So that's where we're at now. I ju literally just ate that meal and that's how my overall day is structured meal wise. Now in terms of what we're focusing on in between those two sessions, there's essentially three factors you need to consider when you've got this small window between training sessions. Like I was trying to do three hours between it. Like I was trying to train a little bit later um, and then go to the class but that three hours like I was feeling it you know I was feeling that like I could only really get one meal in and even if it was a bigger meal like more calories more carbohydrates I felt like I wasn't digesting it quick enough I felt like I wasn't you know on point with my overall recovery in between those two sessions and then that the jiu-jitsu session was just suffering as a result I would either feel really bloated because I've got a huge meal in my belly um, or I was feeling like kind of a bit sluggish or just not recovered from the earlier training session you know and again you can just say like oh just don't train or train after but again that my overall structure doesn't allow that so it is what it is and um, so now that I have five hours it's a lot easier to structure my meals so that I can actually be on point and again as I was saying there's essentially three things that I want to focus on in between those two sessions first of all well four things we'll call it um the first one being getting enough carbohydrates in right so resistance training as much as people kind of make it out to be this hugely glycogen depleting event like it's not hugely but I am doing depending on the the phase of training that I am in I am doing some anaerobic or a lactic conditioning after the training so the anaerobic stuff is a little bit more glycogen depleting um, and i definitely feel that um and then also like my training is quite we'll say dense in terms of i'm only training for an hour but i'm getting a decent amount of volume in in that overall hour like i'm keeping rest periods relatively low like i'm not going up to like five minutes but they're not less than a minute unless it's upper body because i superset kind of push and pull back to back so i can have a shorter rest period then but the overall training session isn't too demanding but it is demanding on my overall recovery and i still need to refuel after it you know if it was just i had the whole day to recover from it it wouldn't really matter a huge amount but given that i only have five hours before my next training session i do need to focus on getting enough calories in and especially getting enough carbohydrates in again jujitsu is that real weird one where it's kind of we'll call it a lactic aerobic in terms of you do a lot of we'll say less than three to five second bursts and you just do those repeatedly and um, but the vast majority of it like you could do jujitsu and find that your heart rate isn't really going over 130 140 for the vast majority of of the time and you might find there's these small periods where boom okay i have to i have to flip the switch boom i have to flip the switch but again it depends and especially if you're just doing a lot of drilling a lot of technique work you know you're not really getting into that really push yourself now if you're doing a lot of rolling you know maybe that's definitely going to be a little bit more demanding and maybe push into that kind of anaerobic stuff but for the vast majority of it it's kind of that alactic aerobic type stuff um so again you will find that if you're not adequately fueled going into that you just don't have that little extra gear and then also you find yourself fading halfway through the class which is not ideal because usually you're going to be rolling at the end of the class so that's when it's most demanding right and again you, like this stuff isn't that important in the grand scheme of things because like you could do you could go in completely fasted for the whole day and still have good workouts and they would still contribute to making you better is that optimal though probably not you know so again like what we're talking about here is moving things towards a more optimal approach taking into account that we're never actually going to achieve optimal unless we are actually athletes unless we're actually getting paid to do this kind of stuff you know so you do have to take that into account we're essentially just trying to make things a little bit easier on ourselves without making things overly specific you know like if you are an athlete then yeah you're gonna have to be overly specific but if you're just someone that's trying to train twice a day do a little bit of sport you know go to the gym before work do some jujitsu or something on your break in between 
because uh, I know a lot of people do that, especially where I live. Like I live in an industrial estate, so a lot of people do like jits on their their lunch break, um, and then you're trying to maybe go home and be with your family or whatever else. Or you know perhaps you are someone that is doing a lot of you know ga training because I have a lot of clients that are in that position where you know they have to they may be a teacher or something they have to do their resistance training in the morning and then they have to go do their ga practice in the evening you know and in that case it's a little bit less of a priority in between sessions but also it becomes a little bit more of a priority once you try or you start getting into those evening times in terms of you're going to have to focus on fueling again coming into that evening session you know because you'll yeah you may have resynthesized glycogen you may have topped up all your stores but you know GAA training will say it's an hour long like it's it's quite energy intensive you know so you're going to have to be really adequately fueled going into that so again meal timing this kind of stuff starts becoming more and more important but yeah anyway back to being on point uh, so there's four things we're trying to do first of all refuel so that's calories one but again depending on the sport you're doing that's going to be carbohydrates or fats for the vast majority of you it's going to be carbohydrates uh, they're going to be the one that give you the most performance benefit so that's the first thing you have to have enough you have to have adequate calories to recover you have to have adequate glycogen stores to be able to push again the only way you're going to get that is if you have carbohydrates pretty straightforward second thing is hydration you know so you have to be hydrated between those two events especially something like jujitsu or gaa you know there is a real risk of cramping you get into positions where you know your your calves may start cramping if you're doing uh ga you know if you're doing jits you know the soles of your feet might start cramping or your hamstrings and um, that's one thing you might start noticing if you're not adequately hydrated but also you're going to notice a decrease in performance it's pretty straightforward you don't have enough water to actually do the stuff that your cells need to do so you know you need to get enough water in between those two sessions and this is especially true if you sweat more right and like i'm in a, a hotter country like it's usually around 35 degrees celsius here so again like i'm sweating more in all of my sessions especially in jits because i have a big gi on me um so hydration i just like that kind of 40 milliliters per kilo recommendation and in hotter climates or in people that are sweating more like that can go up to kind of 60 milliliters per kilo per session basically if you are noticing your urine is yellow then you're probably not in a great or a nicely hydrated position if that makes sense um, like that's not to say it can't be like slightly tinged yellow that's perfectly fine especially if you're like taking multivitamin or whatever um but if it is literally like maple maple syrup you know you, you probably need to hydrate a little bit more you know um so that's hydration is the next thing then also your electrolytes and this for me pretty easy just salt my food don't need to focus on it too much i am sweating more but generally i like saltier tasting things so those two meals that you saw just there the two actual meals the the potatoes and the ground beef uh they were heavily salted then after the fact so i probably if i was to eyeball it i would say that i'm getting about five grams total between those two meals you know um so that's another thing you, you must focus on but then the next thing you need to focus on is we'll call it nervous system recovery because what people will try to do is try to be on all the time like a hundred percent you know they'll, they'll flip the switch in the morning and they'll go balls to the wall in the gym they'll be like mentally there oh yeah i need to push myself and then they'll try to keep that mentality going into the next se next session right and that just burns you out over the long haul throughout the whole day you know so what i like to focus on is as soon as i'm finished that first session like i'm trying to flip that switch back down trying to relax so i'm trying not to you know drink any caffeine or anything like that i'm just trying to basically relax and it's quite easy for me to do with my current setup because i'm essentially just sitting at the laptop then for the next few hours and that's when i do my work that five hour gap i basically just work all the time doing my typing doing my emails doing my little bits and then coming up to that jujitsu time then usually i'll have a coffee and 
start ramping myself back up usually have again that that kind of pre-workout meal that kind of gets me back into that mindset and that's usually we'll say 45 minutes before that class and then i'm ready to go and then again as soon as that class is over i'm down gearing and going back to doing work and i usually stay doing that until four five six it depends on what laura's doing with her work and her overall shifts or whatever you know or what we have planned that day um so that's that's that that's a vlog uh that's me just rambling on for the last 20 minutes but i think you should be able to take a lot away from that in terms of that's what you should be thinking of if you are training two sessions a day if you are training two sessions a day like think of how you are being fueled into that first session but also how you were then fueling into that second session and how are you keeping the mind on point for what needs to be done between those two sessions and i will in the next in the next maybe video go through how i'm setting up my training overall and what that's kind of looking like because even though i'm talking on a day scale in terms of what my my training structure is like like you do have to look at your nutrition and training on a weekly and a monthly scale because there's going to be day, like you can't you can't just be 100 percent on all the time and what i mean by that is you can't just be pushing 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 all the time you're just going to burn yourself out you're going to just not you're basically going to be spinning your wheels you know so i'll show you how i'm kind of putting in rest days and lower intensity days or how i'm kind of modulating intensity uh so that i'm able to train twice a day at least four times per week you know so i'm gonna leave it there guys if you do have any questions about meal timing anything like that there are articles on the website i'd be happy to reply any emails or any comments below but yeah gonna wrap it up there